It is a tradition here at the Jersey Shore. The Jersey Shore Basketball League. It is the semifinal round, and we come to you live here on ShoreSportsNetwork.com. Along with Greg Capalco, I'm Matt Harmon, and we are so excited to be here inside the gym at St. Rose High School, which has been one of the longtime sites here for the JSBL. And, Greg, your uh, history here with this league, obviously very long. It's been something that people just flock to year in and year out, summertime basketball here at the Jersey Shore. Absolutely. This uh, basketball league dates back to the summer of 1969, where the JSBL started uh, at Jerry Lynch's. And... Uh, Moved on to numerous sites, and we are back at St. Rose for our second uh, second trip. And um, once again, it's big time semis here. Yeah, it is the semifinal round, so we're going to do two of the games here tonight. The first one has number two seed Stearns Trailer against number three Orthopedic Institute of Central Jersey. We'll take a break after the first game, bring you back for the second game. That's top seed Larson Ford against number four RKE Athletic. You know, one of the joys of this league is guys can kind of come and go as they want. And we got word about a half an hour before tip-off here today uh, that certainly somebody that everyone is keeping an eye on, number 23, Scotty Lewis for Orthopedic Institute, will be here, will be playing. That usually will bring out some fans. Absolutely, and he is in the building. Uh, Orthopedic hoped to have him for the last night's game in the, in the quarterfinals, but he just got back oh, from his Team Rio tournament in Vegas, a little tired, uh, but he's here playing with his, uh, with his brother tonight, uh, you know, uh, Jordan Smith, and um, tell you what, it's going to be a pleasant surprise seeing him. It's going to be a really uh, exciting game. These teams played a couple of times during the course of the 10-game regular season. Stearns won both of those games, 90-78 to back on July 9th, 126-121 on July 24th. Stearns will be in the white jerseys tonight, Orthopedic Institute in the gray jerseys. And you know, Greg, that's one of the other good things. Depending on who comes, depending on how quick the guys kind of click together, you could have a low scoring game, or as you saw last night in the opening round of the playoffs, you could have a ton of points scored. Well, absolutely. And again, uh, for those tuning in for the first time here, the JSBL is an NCAA sanctioned league. Uh, NBA and pro players allowed to play, and they do play pro rules. There's a 24-second shot clock, 10-minute quarters, and um, there's very few shot clock violations in the JSBL. Yeah, holding on to the basketball and running things down <laughs> has never been part of the league, uh, certainly without question. John Kaminsky, the head coach for Orthopedic Institute, they will start a five tonight in, again, the gray uniforms. Trevis Weiss of St. Peter's, Divine AK from Ryder, George Pappas from Monmouth, Malik Martin of Monmouth and Quran Calhoun from Houston. Stearns wins the opening tip. They are attacking right to left as you see it here on our screen. Again, thanks so much for giving us some time here on a Tuesday night in Belmar, New Jersey. The JSBL semifinals, the winners of the games tonight. Game number two, Larson Ford and RK Athletic will match up in the final. That will take place on Thursday. Neil Thompson, Mike Amon, Jerome Hubbard, Blake Hamilton, and Joe Nickerson, the five on the floor right now for Stearns. Two of the best point guards or better point guards in the league that are left in the playoffs are playing. With the ball there, Neil Thompson, terrific player. Thompson misses as the shot clock was set to go off. First crack at the rim for Orthopedic Institute. And of course, number three with the ball, Travis White from St. Peter's. Weish had a fantastic career for John Dunn. It's a defensive-minded guy, but hits the first three of the night to give Orthopedic Institute the early 3-0 itch. Travis this year, terrific penetrating and passing the ball, becomes really difficult to defend when he hits the long one. Eamon backing his man down, the former star from Raritan High School. Played collegiately at Wagner. Loose ball picked up by E.K. Play four 10-minute quarters. As the season winds down, usually sometimes the roster thin out, but tonight, uh, this is probably the biggest lineup that Orthopedic Institute has had all year. E.K. there with the ball has been their mainstay under the boards, but they also have Karan Calhoun, and A.J. Sumbry from Wagner. That's Calhoun from the outside, and he will hit the three. A 6-0 advantage for Orthopedic Institute to start. Amon on his way. 
is fouled. Our games tonight are presented by Patriot Mortgage, the official sponsor of the JSBL. If you have dreams, then you have solutions, as Patriot Mortgage is committed to offering only the highest quality professional service to their mortgage clients, realtors, and associates. Visit PatriotMortgageForYou.com. Our officials tonight, Taz Beverly, who's wearing note number on the back. Tracy Stamper has number 53. And Rodney Robinson with number 56 on the back of the gray jersey. Eamon makes the first of two. You know, one of the other good parts, as the game rolls on, certainly the competitiveness will take over, but there's a lot of talking back and forth. These guys very familiar with one each other from the college ranks, from leagues like this, and from even going back to the high school days. Yes, uh, trash talking is some of, the, some of the better trash talkers in the league out there between the two point guards, Weish and Thompson. EK hands off to Pappas. We've got a moving screen called on Divine EK. That will be his first foul of the night. Six to the advantage right now for Orthopedic Institute. Good take to the rim by Thompson. Can't get it to go. Finally cleared and handled by Orthopedic Institute. Weiss lost it. Ahead is Hamilton, throws it down with the right hand. Blake Hamilton did that only 100 or so times in his career at Monmouth when he was an all-league guy. That's George Pappas on the drive. He also a current member of the Hawks. King's, King Rice's players from Monmouth have had a very good showing this year in the JSBL. Uh, more than seven or eight of them have actually played as Hamilton drops in a short one. Easy one for Hamilton. He's got four. We're just more than three minutes in. Driving that time was EK. Lost it on the way up. Back the other direction. Thompson, he will drive. Greg, as you said, he is a good point guard, but very dangerous getting to the rim. Pappas this time gets fouled. He will go to the line for two. George spent uh, the early part of the summer uh, at home, or actually on the road in Greece. Uh, didn't come back till probably week three of the JSBL. And he's been one of the primary scorers. Uh, had a couple of really big nights here uh, over the last couple of weeks. And it's been really tough to stop. Had 37 one night in, in three quarters. Uh, and the way he's progressing, uh, it should bode wonders for the Hawks this year at Mama. Pappas misses the first free throw. It does make sense the way that the game is set up collegiately now. So many of these guys just kind of stick around. So if you are at Monmouth and you're a player or at Brookdale or any of the other kind of surrounding schools, it makes sense to get hooked into a league like the JSBL because you're close by and you can get games in on top of all the practice you've got during the course of the summer. Here's Hubbard from the outside. Halfway down, no good. Weish on the run. Left wide open. Too much. Hubbard, the stop and pop. That one is good for Jerome Hubbard. Ex-Brookdale player finished his collegiate career at, Rama, uh, at Stockton for Coach Jerry Matthews. That's Calhoun trying another one for the outside. Actually played, um, played for us at Neptune High School. Uh, of course, didn't develop his three-point game until after high school. And he's got a good one. I blame that on coaching. Nickerson on the move. I'll have to give Kenny O'Donnell all the blame on that. Nickerson's first two, 13-9. The advantage right now for Stearns. Weish, the extra pass. Open three in the corner is good from E.K. Thompson right back the other direction. He's got a couple of buckets here in the last minute or so. Raises his game total to four. You know, Matt, all season long, the JSBL has been a really guard-orientated league. Most teams playing three, sometimes even 
four guard lineups. Uh, but tonight, both teams have uh, pretty good front lines. Pappas gets the other half of the roll. E.K. from the outside again. That's got it. A couple of threes for Devon E.K. He's got six for the game. Tied at 15. Our main man, Brad Biarascano, running the board for us tonight. Tom Trembley helping out with the camera. And an unnamed camera person on the top. Family affair tonight, let's just say that. 4.37 to go, we get some substitutions into the game. Larry Smith from North Texas State checking in, and Matt Ringel from Georgian Court, who wears number 36. Matt finished the fine career up at Brookdale Community College this year, winning a second national championship for Coach Chizak. He'll be headed to Georgian Court in the fall. Pappas has Weish. Eamon will pick up the loose ball, and Thompson wants to run. Hubbard pops from the outside. That's good. Hubbard with a pair of threes in this first quarter. And no iron on that one. Stearns by three. Pappas will try and change that. Here comes Smith up court. Good read by Hubbard. Thompson on the drive. Hubbard again left alone. Pretty good ball movement by Stearns, but blocked at the rim was Thompson. You know, as we get a little deeper in the season, the play becomes a lot more unselfish, Matt. No good for Calhoun. Well, that's what I was trying to get to before, Greg. When you think of it, it's supposed to be a fun league. It's usually offensive-minded without question. But now it's playoff time, so the competitive fire will come out a little bit. So you would generally go back to those old-fashioned basketball instincts. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the season ends regardless on Thursday night with the championship game here on August 2nd at 8 p.m. But everybody wants to play, so no one wants to go home unless they're forced out of the gym. Jordan Smith checking in. Scotty Lewis checking in for Orthopedic Institute. This is Scotty's first game with Orthopedic. Played earlier in a terrific exhibition game that we had this season between Doughboys and nationally ranked Under Armour team, Team Rio. It's going to be interesting to see how he meshes in with this group tonight. Three from the outside is good for Jerome Hubbard, who's got the hot hand. That one off the mark from Smith. Sultan Aminu has come in as well for Stern's trailer. We got a substitution coming here with just over two minutes remaining. And a quick timeout will come as well with Stern's all of a sudden, as this game was tied at 15, has gone on a pretty major run to go up 26-15. Yeah, well, I tell you, runs are the name of the game in, uh, in the JSBL. I, again, last night we had a terrific uh, matchup between defending champ CBU Jeep uh, against RKE Athletic, and CBU led most of the way, led by Justin Robinson, who put in a mild 43. Uh, had a 22-point lead in the third quarter. An injury to Roy Mabry knocked him out of the game in the fourth quarter, and RKE made a terrific comeback and won by two points, uh, knocking out the defending champs. So we will have a new champion this year. RKE, the number four seed in the playoffs, will take on top seed Larson Ford. That game scheduled to start around 8.45. We say scheduled to start. Those times can be a little loose in the Summer League, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean for us starting Friday at 7.30 tonight, it's a real, um, uh, you know, it's, a re it's a real treat. Again, uh, a lot of time the early games, the players get here a little later. The late game guys are usually here on time. So all in all, uh, 
As long as we start somewhere prior to nine, we'll be thrilled. Lewis will put it in play. Jordan Smith to bring it up court. A.J. Sumbry, number 10, has checked in as well for Orthopedic Institute. Weish will go to the line for a pair. Sumbry, uh, a, a, a Wagner player, uh, had a terrific year last year in the JSBL. Hasn't played much this year. He's the actual playoff exception for orthopedic. Uh, JSBL rules are you need to participate in three or be at three of your team's games to be eligible. But all teams get one exception uh, as long as they've played one game. And he is that. Thompson driving. Lost it to Lewis, who's pinned in the corner. Less than two to go, quarter number one. Lewis looking over the top. Drops off, open three for Jordan Smith. We've got a loose ball foul on the floor, and it will be Stearns to take it over. Minute 36 remaining here in quarter number one. Tavon Bennett wants to check in and will give Weiss a break for Orthopedic Institute. Bennett can be an offensive force, streaky shooter. Uh, he has a he, he can get hot type of player, make a couple threes, and that's what they need at this point. Orthopedic, they need to hit a couple to get right back in this one. Down ten right now. They'll stay down ten. Long rebound to Smith. Right down the lane, runner too strong, and then a loose ball foul over the top. We've gone Sumbry. Who'll get called for that? Stearns is coached by longtime JSBL legendary coach Ron Pastore. Been in the league 29 years, and uh, he's actually assisted by uh, Richie Brunson, who is the uh, women's coach, ex Rutgers player, leading the Stearns trailer team. Foul shot for Larry Smith. First one drops in. George Pappas returning. And Lewis to bring it up court. Step back jumper from just inside the three line. Off the mark. Minute to go. There's that extra pass. It's Smith who's open from three and will hit. Pappas around the screen. You know, Matt, one thing about the three ball, when you make him, it, it makes you look really good. But when you miss him, you can go into some pretty long dry spells. And that's what happens to be going on right now for Orthopedic Institute. Going back to the line for Stearns will be Neil Thompson. Thompson, who's got four so far tonight. That last foul on Pappas, his first. As good, of, as, as good as a driver as Neil Thompson is, he does sometimes struggle a bit at the free throw line. Gets that second one to go, make it 32-16. Doubled up on the scoreboard here in the first quarter. Yeah, it looks like we have a little 16-0 run going on here by Stearns Trailers. Shot clock to six. Lewis, good ball fake. He'll drive, silky smooth, on his way to the rim for Scotty Lewis. Down to five. 
Good ball fake. Three on the way. It's good. Jerome Hubbard, who's got a dozen at the end of the quarter, make it 35-18 after one. We will step out for just a brief timeout. Come back for the start of the second quarter. You are watching the JSBL semifinals here on the Shore SportsNetwork.com. We are back here for the start of quarter number two. JSBL semifinals here from St. Rose High School. Matt Harmon, Greg Kapalko, happy to be on the call here. ShoreSportsNetwork.com picking up these two semifinal games. This is Stearns Trailers and Orthopedic Institute of Central Jersey. Stearns had a pretty fantastic finish to that first quarter. They lead 35-18. They are in the white jerseys tonight. Orthopedic Institute in the grays. Driving good, tough move to the rim. That will fall in for Tavon Bennett. And Jay Hubbard with five for eight from three and a little short, did he get the roll? He did, six for nine from three. Lee Stearns with 18 points right now, while EK has six to lead orthopedic. Pappas tripped up on his way to the rim. Coming back in, Joe Nickerson for Stearns Trailers. Orthopedic is going to need to find somebody to get a hand in Hubbard's face because right now he's killing him. Hubbard, by the way, uh, in the regular season was 43 for 112 from three, shot just under 39% from three. And even though we do play college rules here, excuse me, pro rules here, we are using the high school 19, 19 9 three point line, and a lot of these guys really eat it up. I mean, traditionally, you get 40 plus three attempts per game with the better shooting three teams. And especially playing the high school line, that's a gimme for a lot of these guys. Yes, well, it, again, um, we're going to try next year here at the JSBL to at least get to the college line another foot, but again, we're guests here, the JSBL is guests here at St. Rose, so they didn't want to do anything permanently uh, to do anything to the floor. So that's one of the reasons it is what it is at this point in time. Hubbard, a guy who averaged just over 19 a game in his time this summer. He's got the ball right now, and he's continued to have the hot hand. Yeah, if you're going to help, you really can't help off of Amen. Gives back to Thompson, little stutter move down the right side of the lane. And Neil Thompson shows his stuff to put Stearns up 40 to 21. We're a bit more than a minute in with 8.40 remaining in the first half. Good bang down inside. Friendly roll for A.J. Sumbry. Quick trigger from Hubbard. Long rebound to Thompson. Reverse layup attempt. He gets bumped by Sumbri, and Thompson has an opportunity to add to his point total from the free throw line. We'll have time during the, the course of this broadcast, Greg, but you've been attached to this league for so long. This year, the six teams, I know in a perfect world you'd, you'd like to see expansion a little bit next year. Absolutely. We, we really would like to get back to eight teams. Uh, we have a couple of, uh, we have a couple of uh, franchises interested uh, in getting in next year. Again, with six, though, we've had six pretty good teams this year, even though 
some teams, of course, with better records than others, uh, the games have been very competitive. Opening round of the playoffs last night has left us with this Final Four. Top seed is Larson Ford, and they went 8-2 during the course of the regular season. Yeah, Larson's two losses this year. Um, one was to RKE by two, and I'm trying to recall who their, who their other defeat was. Um, I believe, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll have to check that with Rich Conover, our, our stat keeper. An interesting thing about statistics, this league's been going on since 1969. There have been two stat guys in the history of the league. One is Rich Conover, who's probably been here for the last 40 odd years. And the other was Billy Kane, former Neptune graduate who was the head of public relations for the Milwaukee Bucks for quite a spell. Wait. And actually, we have to hope to have him in the house. He returns to the Jersey Shore every year for his Neptune reunion. He's supposed to be back in town from, he lives in Wisconsin, for the final this Thursday. Blake Hamilton to the free throw line. Hits the first. Second one from the lefty, also good. Make it now 44-26. Stearns. Weish. Orthopedic Institute got off to a pretty quick start, but then a big run by Stearns at the end of the first quarter. Put that on ice. Thompson and Hubbard have made life pretty difficult. We've got to travel before that shot goes up. So Hamilton shuffled a little bit there. Again, this is, um, this is uh, Coach Pastore's uh, Stearns team. He actually put this team, to put this franchise together back 29 years ago when the league actually moved from the Bur from um, the headliner to the Birch Hill Swim Club. That's when the league first went NCAA sanctioned, and he's been coaching ever since. And this is Orthopedic's second year, coming off a one-win season, finished in third place in the regular season. Uh, quite a turnaround in one year. Went six and four. And by the way, their only win last year was against Stearns. You know, you talk about the roster, and that's always one of the interesting things, how the rosters get put together. So the guys that are on Stearns this year that we're watching right now, would they be put back on Stearns next year if they're interested in playing? It, again, everyone's a free agent at the end of the year. If a player feels he doesn't mesh well with his teammates, if he doesn't get along with the coach, not enough playing time, uh, you know, they'll switch to another team. But believe it or not, most of the guys that are out hit with Stearns have been on Stearns for a number of years. Blake Hamilton, he's the only team he's ever played for in the league. He's been in the league quite a while. Neil Thompson, same thing. He's only been a Stearns player. Um, you know, so most of them have. Mike Amon, it's, again. Uh, guys so, usually will stay with the team that they're on. They, they, they will, and again. You know, it's, it's, it's an NCAA sanctioned league. The only thing you get out of this league is, is playing time in a run. And you, you mesh with your teammates, play some really good basketball. Guys have, have a tendency to stick together. And Stearns, by the way, has had a great run uh, over the last 10 or so years um, since we moved from Burchill, actually, from, from actually 2000 on, the last 17 years. I mean, they've been, in, they've been in the finals like six or seven times. Um, and uh, and basically, they have two titles. They've lost five times in the titles of their of their seven trips to the finals, and you know they're they're trying to make it an eighth time. A jump to settle things after the ball was stuck in the rim. Yeah, one of the differences with the NBA rules versus college rules is that any tie up will be a jump ball. They don't do alternate possessions. Hamilton off a giveaway will lay it in. And you talked about Hamilton being a Stearns guy since his days at Monmouth. I mean, he's been graduated for several years, but he's a guy who still can ball a little bit and still likes to play. This is a perfect opportunity for him to still get a little run. Well, Blake went overseas after he graduated Monmouth, uh, came back, played in the summertime, and, uh, you know, right now he has his own uh, – uh, basketball networking business, find a baller, and what he and what he does and, and what he does ties into the sport. He works with a lot of the kids uh, that are up and coming, learning learning to play the game. 
and uh, he's actually cut back on his playing a little bit over the past few years. But to be honest, he's still a real glue guy for Coach Ronnie. Weiss driving, gets that to fall. In transition, ball deflected out, and it will stay with Stearns. 5.42 remaining here. Second quarter, Stearns up 46-28. Hubbard, good split through a double. Amon gets the runner from the right side. Here's Weiss driving. Stearns looking for an offensive basket interference, which they won't get. I'd be interested to see if they give that to Weiss or they give it to... Calhoun, who was the last man in. Yeah, I think Calhoun got the got the stuff of Runa. Nickerson with that three. Easy one for Joe Nickerson. Past the midpoint here of our second quarter. Lewis gets called for a travel. You mentioned Scotty Lewis, Greg, just back from a pretty important trip for his AAU team. Team Rio out in Las Vegas. Yeah, they uh, they played at the uh, Under Armour Nationals out there. Uh, again, a terrific AAU career, I believe. Uh, their A uh, his grade level, their, the 17U Team Rio, uh, their AAU career is done because they're all rising seniors, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see where he chooses because every every who's who in basketball, Kentucky, Duke, Villanova, you name it, uh, they'd love to have him and his Randy teammate. Uh, uh, Antoine, Brian Antoine. Great move to the rim there by Larry Smith. EK gets called. We've got a uh, actually an offensive foul that they will call. It's going to go against. Actually, Stearns. Actually, it's a defensive three seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, pro rule, NBA rule. If you don't play your man, you have to double team someone. If you stay in the paint for three seconds defensively, it's a one shot technical foul. That's one you wouldn't have on the high school or college level. That is an obscure NBA rule. Pappas will take the free throw. 4.15 remaining second quarter. Makes the one. And Orthopedic will get the ball back, 53-31. That in the, um, in the land of pro rules, technical fouls at this level are always going to be a one-shot tack. Unlike college where two in the ball. Weiss driving. Good body control as he got bumped by Eamon on his way to the rim. And I see Mustafa Traor just walked into the gym. He had a late class, promised Coach Pass that he would be here, and true to his word, he's in the building. Three fifty-one remaining. Point lead right now for Stearns. Amon will drive. Stays down on the floor. Shaken up is Mike Amon. And he's holding his ankle there, Matt. And he's coming off an E injury and an Achilles over the last couple years. He's had it rough. Uh, finished the career, I believe, on the injured list up at Wagner. And he does take a lot of space up for, for the Stearns team in the post. Big boy had a great high school career, led Raritan to a Shore Conference championship. Oh, I, I was at that game. That was at Monmouth U. That was, uh, uh, they, 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 he capped off a terrific run. That was, I believe, his junior year. It was a one-man show that day. Well, we've got a second here with 3.38 remaining in this first half. Greg, tell us a little bit about 
the second semifinal that we have. Larson Ford, the number one seed against RKA Athletic, the number four. Well, again, you have you have two veteran teams there. Uh, uh, the the Larson team is coached by Charlie Brown, who was a longtime uh, Jersey Jersey City State coach, and uh, his squad is packed with uh, a bunch of North Jersey players, a lot of tough NJAC players, and. Uh, they play hard D, they go to the basket, very unselfish. Probably the, the star guy on their team is a, is a player by the name of Jesse Jones, who uh, is a long-range bomber, played at Bridge, uh, Bridgeport U, had a terrific career, and uh, they had the best regular season record. And RKE is a veteran team uh, led by Gage Day uh, of Bloomfield, and uh, uh, he, is, he was the league's leading scorer until Justin Robinson scored 50 50 and 50 for 50 plus three of his last four games to to win the league scoring title uh, but Gage Day is a terrific player RKE a veteran team they have a lot of combo guards and bigs they don't have a true point guard and 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 that and and that being said has hurt them at times I believe they lead the league in turnovers which uh, has come back to haunt them on numerous occasions this year. Robinson's been a fun guy to watch play in the JSBL, huh? Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, just Justin. It, it, ironically, he was when he first was at Monmouth, he was supposed to play with Stearns, but Ronnie had too many guards, so he he traded him more or less to Steve and Tyler Schmelz from Seaview Jeep, and they're still thanking him to this day because he's been he's been by far the most exciting player in this league as he was when he played for Monmouth U at the MAC. Probably only so much you can trade, right? I mean, maybe Seaview gave through in a new set of tires somewhere along the way for Ron or something like that? I, I tell you, I doubt that changed hands. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be surprised if, if it was a Pepsi Light or actually Ronnie likes uh, Sprite Free. So it probably was some non-carbonated or non-caffeine drink. All right, they've gotten Eamon off the floor. Hopefully the big man is okay. We'll get back to action here with a 20-point lead for Stearns, who leads Orthopedic Institute. This is the first of two semifinals for JSBL. We're presented tonight by Patriot Mortgage, the official sponsor of the JSBL. If you have dreams, they have solutions, as Patriot Mortgage is committed to offering only the highest quality professional service to their mortgage clients, realtors, and associates. Visit PatriotMortgage4U.com. Got a shot clock violation. How about Ron Pastore right now, Greg? He's asking for a video replay. We don't have it. Gee, Ron, what do you think? This is the NBA again. This, uh, matter of fact, Matt, this is really <laughs> terrific. This is really terrific. Uh, this is a new venture, I believe, for the Shore Sports Network. Guys were big, uh, in, you know, in, in doing a lot of game of the week radio broadcasts. Um, watched you guys do the uh, the football classic this past summer and uh, looks like you guys might be onto something here. We might be onto something, but I'm not sure if we're quite ready for uh, replays for coaches that they want to be able to check for shot clock violations. Maybe next year we'll get to that, Brad. All right. 18-point advantage right now. Pappas could cut into it. He will drive and go to the free throw line. Would like to see a little left hand there, but crossed over and try to get a deuce on it. You know, he's a good case in point. I know we were talking about him before, but if you look at some of the guys for this Mammoth team, a Pappas, a Malik Martin, a Mustafa Traor, guys who were part of a young kind of changing roster last year, for King Rice, getting these extra game minutes can be extremely beneficial come November, December, oh, especially the beginning part of the year. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, Pappas is a rising sophomore at Monmouth. He was elevated from a walk-on to a scholarship player, played at Union Catholic, and then prep school at Gold Academy in Maine. And again, he was hurt a lot last year, banged up a little bit, and as most of the Monmouth freshmen last year. That was a team that could have won 20 plus games last year had things broken correctly, but injuries and that freshmanitis probably really hurt them. Over the top of the backboard off the three attempt from Devine Ike. <laughs> 240 run remaining in this second quarter. Stearns 53, Orthopedic Institute 36. It's 
called on the floor, I believe. NBA rules, uh, each team 5,000 a quarter. You shoot two on all, drive into the basket shots or, or fouls on the court once you hit the fifth, and I believe that is the fifth foul on orthopedic, so whether it's on the floor or shooting, it's still going to be two. First one is off the mark. When you think of some of the rules we've been saying, obviously the, the floor here is set for high school, but the rules that are instituted in the JSBL, what's the, what are the conversations that take place in order to kind of put together the, the best set of rules for a league like this? Well, again, you know, the game is for the players. So first of all, by playing pro rules, it allows a little bit more contact, which you kind of need to be able to play with. Number two, what it, what, what it also does, we play with the six foul rule. So, again, you get a couple fouls early. You don't have to ride the bench. You could actually you, you could actually play through a lot of this stuff. I mean, even new in the JSBL is we have the the, the, the charge semicircle underneath the basket. I get it was always called that way, but we actually inserted it this year to give it you know a defined purpose or defined area where you have the block charge rule. Easier for the officials to call. Nice crossover by Thompson, stuck under the rim a bit with the shot clock set to expire. We're under two minutes in the second quarter. Pappas with a step back three. Tell you, if uh, Porto can get a little run here and get this down under 10, could get a lot more interesting in the second half. So I guess Stearns is going to try to keep him at bay and they just want to get back in striking distance here. And the nice thing here is you could make a run even with a minute and a half remaining. Weish, that's one that he'll usually make. Track down on the corner. Thompson grabs it for Stearns. Will get called for a travel before he got the pass off. Play Hamilton returning for Stearns. Amanu checking out. Lewis pulling from the corner and hitting. I tell you, I watched him play against Doughboys uh, in the exhibition that we had here a few weeks back. And he was, and again, playing against older guys, and he was terrific. Uh, had 27, 28 points, a couple of unbelievable dunks, and hit some threes. Pappas again from the corner. That one short, kept alive for orthopedic. Weish on the drive. Two on one here for Stearns. Make it now a four on one. Hubbard can't get the triple to go. Thompson is there. Pappas called for a foul and a technical on top of it. Well, I don't know what he's complaining about. <laughs> it was a four on one underneath and uh, tough to miss the foul there. Thompson will go to the line for the technical. Yeah, I, I would have been surprised to see Neil shoot that when you have uh, Jay Hub here. And uh, Hub usually pretty proficient from the free throw line. He'll make the tech. And now we'll get what was the original foul. That will bring Thompson back to the line. Everybody set for the free throw. Thompson makes that one. He's got one more. Neil Thompson, interesting player, played professionally in Spain, finishes a D2 career at Wilmington, was the National Player of the Year for Brookdale Community College, and he led his team to the 2010 National Championship. And... Uh, and, and, and currently is an assistant coach for the women's program up at Brookdale. Good high school career at Monmouth Regional. 
24 seconds remaining. We've got a timeout as Orthopedic Institute wants to talk about what could be their final possession here in this first half. They've cut it to 15, 56-41. You're watching tonight's semifinal round of the JSBL, the Jersey Shore Basketball League at shoresportsnetwork.com. Good crowd has turned out on hand, so we've, and we'll have time during the second game as well. Uh, we open saying back here at a familiar site, St. Rose, which is now a two-time participant in the JSBL. Uh, absolutely. Again, again, interesting history. JSBL started off at Jerry Lynch's in the early careers, early years. Uh, there were actually multiple home sites. They played at Seagirt Inn, Big Bills. Uh, they played at Mike Doolin's. Um, eventually, the league decided uh, when Lynch's got to the point where they couldn't host it anymore, they went to the headliner for years. And then the Birch Hill. Uh, the three years spent at Birch Hill, we ran into some interesting weather that happened to be in the thunderstorm belt of New Jersey. And there were so many games rained out. If the league didn't move indoors, the league probably, wow, in and out by Hubbard. Loose ball picked up by Hamilton will lay it in. And that will take us to the end of the first half. Hubbard is arguing for what he thought was a surefire foul. And I think he's got the referee to agree, saying, I think I missed that one as well. You don't get that to happen very often. Well, listen, there's a smile on everybody's face, so it's really, it's really not a bad thing. But uh, again, uh, without question, uh, Stearns has looked the, the more physical team, the more experienced team, and they've really done a terrific job taking advantages of the mismatch. And right now, Jay Hubbard has been the mismatch. So uh, interesting first half. Does Orthopedic have a run in him? In the second half, they're going to need to come out strong in the third. All right, we'll take a timeout here. You will continue to see video, but we're going to kill the audio for just a little bit. We'll come back with stats, some numbers for you. We'll update everybody's scoring, and we'll get you set for the start of half number two. It is 58-41. Stearns leading Orthopedic Institute. Semifinal number one, half number one. The JSBL semifinals here at shoresportsnetwork.com.
We are back for the start of half number two. Good to be with you here. Matt Harmon, Greg Kupalko, Kevin Williams, Tom Tremblay, Brad Biroscano, the crew tonight for ShoreSportsNetwork.com. We are broadcasting the two semifinal games of the Jersey Shore Basketball League presented by Patriot Mortgage, official sponsor of the JSBL. If you have dreams, they have solutions as Patriot Mortgage is committed to offering only the highest quality professional service to their mortgage clients, realtors, and associates. Visit Patriot Mortgage for you. Dot com. Good to be with you tonight. Back to uh, St. Rose in Belmar, New Jersey. He's Greg Capalco. I'm Matt Harmon. Greg, the two guys, obviously, for Stearns that have made the biggest difference. Jerome Hubbard's got 19. Neil Thompson's got 12. Absolutely. And, and, and that combined with solid three-point shooting, I mean, eight for 16. 16 is not a lot of threes in the JSBL and a half, and Stearns is shooting 50 from three. Well, on the other side of the coin, uh, the statistics from three, it's six for 23 for orthopedic and you're going to have to shoot better than a 25% clip if you're going to want to get back in the ball game. Yeah, going to be a tough road for Orthopedic Institute to climb here. This is the first of our two semifinal games. The second one coming up, we'll probably have about 15 minutes in between uh, game number one and game number two, which is Larson for the top seed against RKE Athletic. Uh, you think of it, I think maybe not just offensively, but Orthopedic Institute, and again, in the second half, you might see a change. You're going to have to tighten the screws a little bit defensively. Well, th th they are. Again, Neil Thompson is really difficult to defend when he goes to the basket. And if you start helping on him, it's going to leave a couple of those three-point shooters open. And unfortunately for orthopedic, Hubbard was the one that was open when that game was tied at 16 where they had that 16-0 run. And that has been the, the impetus to, for them to jump to this big 17-point lead where they're at at this point in time. Right, back to action we go. It is Orthopedic Institute in gray, Stearns in the white. We get our first look at Mustafa Treyor, the 6'8 player out of Mammoth, wearing number 16 tonight. You said he came in late, which is also one of the beauties of this league. Just show up, right? Just get here. He had class tonight. you got to make sure you take care of things ac academically. He's a good player for King Rice at Monmouth, but you got to make sure you get the credits in the summertime. There, there's no question about it as Malik Martin misses a tough drive to the hoop, but he's fouled. Yeah, and, and again, uh, you know, the deal with Monmouth University, uh, King Rice, assistant coach Rick Callahan and company, uh, they school, basketball workouts, everything comes first, and then on your free time you can come and play in the JSBL. And you love to see the dedication of players like Mustafa and Malik Martin and George Paps here tonight. Um, they're here to play no matter what they do during the day at, at, at the university in the summertime. Kyle Bradshaw with a free throw. He's got one more. Might be oh, Malik Martin, excuse me, that was Martin. That might be a way for Orthopedic Institute to get back into it. Take the ball to the rim a little bit more. That one will count. It should count for Joe Nickerson. One shot on top of that one. Tough drive by Nickerson. Again, Nickerson, uh, uh, national champion at Brookdale Community College. He was a uh, really, really tough defensive player. Still is a good defensive player. Not a great perimeter shooter, but he can defend and go to the basket. Defense is a word sometimes we use lightly during the regular season here at the JSBL. Yeah, lightly indeed. Summer basketball, supposed to be about getting shots up and getting points. Weish dumping it down for Calhoun. He'll drive. Missed the first one, but tipped in his own miss. Calhoun with a couple of buckets tonight, 60 to 43. Skipping down inside, that easy lay-in goes for E.K. Terrific pass by Travis White. Led him perfectly to the rim. It's tightening up a little bit here. The lead for Stearns is now 14. You know, Matt, sometimes it's hard enough when you're in college and you're a freshman playing against seniors. <laughs> that match up there had that rising sophomore Martin <laughs> guarding probably a 26 or 27-year-old Nickerson. So <laughs> never gets easier on the college kids. And, and that's the thing about the JSBL. When we first went to the NCAA sanction, you've, you, you've had the 
the current college player playing against the overseas player, the guy that's graduating in his mid-20s. And even when you get a player that graduated college, sometimes there was a mismatch. Again, the, there were the days, the early days when we moved to St. Rose, you had a dozen NBA players playing in this building. Calhoun missing the first of a pair of free throws. Who's the biggest name the JSBL's ever had? Well, if, if, if I'm going to make the call, it was the first guy, and, and maybe it's not the biggest name nationwide, but at the short, it's Bob Verga. Again, there'd be no JSBL without Bob Verga. He was the player of the year the first five years of the league, and the whole league was basically built around him, and he was pretty much unstoppable. Now, since then, uh, you've had a lot of interesting guys playing the league. Of course, Anthony Mason played three or four years with RKE in the league uh, uh, when he was a New York Nick and eventually uh, Charlotte Hornet. Eddie Jones played with the Lakers and the Sixers played in the league. Rick Brunson, uh, father of uh, Jalen Brunson, played in the league. Alex Bradley played with the Knicks. Clinton Wheeler played with the Knicks. Rick Smith played with the Pacers. He played when the league was up at Birch Hill. Eleven point advantage right now for Stearns. That would have been a big three for Pappas. There's a foul. Offensive it will go. Weish, who was a defensive stalwart for St. Peter's in his years under John Dunn, just drew a big charge. Mitch Kupchak, general manager of the That's Lakers at one name. time, played in the JSBL. Uh, I, I, again, Eddie, Eddie Jordan, Phil Sellers, you know, Mike Dabney, that whole Rutgers group, they played as a team for three years, won the title three years in a row back in the headliner days in the JSBL. As I recall, Anthony Mason, he didn't mind his nights down in Belmar in the summertime. Absolutely not. Spent uh, in the early years, he spent he spent his days uh, at the boathouse when it was over on uh, Highway 71 before it moved to its current location on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Him and his, uh, I guess, uh, cast and character, ca cast of characters. And by the way, they were really terrific uh, people. That, that, that his his friends that came down. Now you know Anthony passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, was a really fun guy and became a friend uh, throughout the years. Just about uh, at the seven minute mark in the third quarter. It's tightened up a bit, 61-50. Step back, jumper falls for Joe Nickerson. Pappas, good little hop step in the lane. Leads it off with a two-hand dunk for E.K. Yeah, Devon E.K., we've seen a lot of that this season out of him. Uh, fine player. He's going to be a terrific player for Ryder again this year. That's Hamilton, the smooth touch from the outside. Blake doesn't seem to have the hops as he had in the early days, but... Uh, still goes in. It still goes in, and he has the, the, the basketball savvy as E.K. finishes going to the hoop. Again, they're only down 12 here. You cut this under 10, they have six minutes to get to the fourth quarter. All hell could break loose here in this fourth quarter. Looking at some of the all-time best in scoring on the sheet you handed to me before the game, Kelly Trapuca. Kelly Trapuca. Um, he was an NBA All-Star when he played for Art Stock and the uh, and the and, and the and the Birch Hill team over at uh, at the headliner. Uh, Troy Murphy, uh, seven or eight-year NBA player, played in the league. Lloyd Daniels could be fun to watch too. <laughs> Lloyd Daniels, interesting player. Played actually one game with RKE and decided there wasn't enough basketballs on the team, and he was <laughs> he was optioned to Stearns for the rest of his career here. Which Coach Ron took him gladly. Under six remaining. That lead continues to hover in the low double digits. Thompson had it swatted away. Weish up court. I believe EK got a hand on it. Calhoun. Weish gets it back. 
Feeds inside, E.K. Had it blocked away once. Weish can't get the short runner. Pappas, the floater. Somebody, That's good. Somebody need to finish that time. Boy, they had four or five opportunities. And I think Coach P needs a, a timeout coming up here now that they've got it under 10. Don't want to turn around and this be a four-point game. Orthopedic Institute cutting it to single digits for the first time in quite some time. Hamilton on the block. E.K. really feeling it. Here comes Thompson on the break. Three on two. Now Orthopedic back defensively goes through the hands of Hamilton. You know, as a coach in this league, you have to be careful about playing your players too many minutes in a row here. Again, this is the summer. They aren't doing sprints and running every single day. They're really just kind of playing. Not that they're not in shape, but you, you, you take a couple possessions off, all of a sudden teams can get a little bit of a run going. EK, step through. He's fouled. And we'll go to the free throw line for two shots. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, other than coming down and showing up on game days, there's no practice, right? Absolutely not. No practice. Uh, no practice. But again, a lot of the college players, they're, they're playing every single day, you know, whether it be at Ryder or at Wagner or at Monmouth, St. Peter's or wh wherever the kids are going. So uh, they are working out. But as a unit, you're not working out, which, which, which makes it a game that you really need basketball smarts to be good, realize the pick and roll, realize you know, kick and penetrate, drive and penetrate, and, 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 and find someone that's wide open. Uh, savvy guards, again, like Neil Thompson, you know, gets guys like Hubbard open shots. And uh, a lot of times they're open anyway, but sometimes they're really open, and that's what was the case in that second or that late first quarter run. Our second game was scheduled to start at 8.45. I can tell you that that will not happen because it's about 8.30 right now, and we are still in the third quarter right now with 428 remaining. We'll have about 15 minutes in between the first and the second game. Our second semifinal top seeded Larson Ford against number four RKE Athletic. Those teams split the pair of games that they played with RKE winning the last one 103-101. That was a week ago with Gage Day lighting it up for 35. Yeah, that was a, that was a really terrific game and again, um, that was one of the nights. Larson usually shows up with seven or eight players, and Coach Brown usually has no problem. He had like a dozen that night, and he probably played too many guys. Sometimes playing too many can hurt you. They show up, you got to put them in the game, especially in the regular season. Weish cuts the deficit to seven. Back up now to nine with Amanu. Pappas driving. And three off the mark. Ball came right to Calhoun without even jumping. Orthopedic still pretty inconsistent from three. Pappas can change it with that one and does. Squared up on that one. Wasn't off balance and uh, knocked it down. And here we go, six points. Maybe a little bit of a bailout foul there as Larry Smith had lost control of it. And here's that timeout I thought they would should call a couple minutes ago. And it's at six, so boy, where'd that 20-odd point lead go? Yeah, crazy. Right like that, down to a half a dozen. 329 remaining in this third quarter. Our games tonight presented by Patriot Mortgage, the official sponsor of the JSBL. If you have dreams, they have solutions. Patriot Mortgage committed to offering only the highest quality professional service to their mortgage clients, realtors, and associates. Visit PatriotMortgage4U.com. That's the number 4.com. Greg, six teams this year, and I know the league has kind of changed, you know, different, different times, different number of teams. What does a sponsor have to do to be part of the JSBL? Well, the first thing we require uh, besides, you know, besides the financial commitment, 
you know, we, we, we need to make sure that A, you have a coach, and B, you have a roster. So anybody looking to put a team in the league, we, we'd like you to have four, five, six players that we believe can be competitive in the league. We've had teams in the past want to get in the league where the players would have been totally non-competitive. So, so you, you need to attract that. And again, you're not going to get all your players for a league like the JSBL from the Monmouth Ocean County area. You need to get players, North Jersey, Philadelphia, New York, and whatnot. Avenue with the putback. Thought maybe we could throw together a shoresportsnetwork.com with some of the guys, but I don't think we'd be on the competitive side like you're talking about. Probably not. Probably not. Um, again, the Doughboys team this year was, with the exception of one player, was an entire college Division I type team. They won two games in the regular season, but they were in almost every game. But at the end of the day, they, they just didn't have enough size and uh, they need another year experience. But they were competitive. And again, with the six-team league, you're going to have teams with losing records. But if your last-place team can beat your first-place team on any given day, and by the way, Doughboys did in one of, one of their victories, they did beat uh, Stearns in the regular season in overtime. Good rebound inside by Ringel. Tipped away. Pappas gets it. Weish will leave it for Pappas. He just hit from that spot. Can't get that one to go. Weish comes in with those pesky hands. Yeah, Aminu is not very happy on that call. Thought it might have been off Weish, but uh, Orthopedic does retain possession. Weish coming out. Scotty Lewis checking back in. Eight point deficit, 2.48 to go in the third. Be interesting to see if Lewis can give them a lift. He'll try right off the out, and he will knock in a three. Off the bench and on cue for Scotty Lewis. Hey, the rim's 10 feet, no matter where you play. Lead is now five. Thompson gets bumped on his way by Malik Martin. And a pair of free throws coming for Mr. Thompson. First one good for Thompson. He's got one more. Connects there as well. Martin quickly up court, was bumped. That's going to be an offensive foul. Contact like that outside the charge zone is going to be. Martin checking out. Jordan Smith coming back in. Coach John Kaminsky is just looking for a group that can play together to get a little run going. That one sent up, and here comes Lewis on the break. Pappas the extra pass. Jordan Smith's three, no good. Quickly driving back the other way. Big block by Calhoun. That was a drive by Larry Smith. Aminu picks it back up. Ringel keeps it alive. He's bumped count it and one. Ringel, not a lot of hops. Did a nice job clearing out. The ball got to him and um, takes up a lot of space. Put it right back up. Did a lot of that this past season in Brookdale's run to their 33-0 national championship run at Division III junior college ranks. It's a great opportunity. We mentioned he's going to continue at Georgian Court for that, I'll say, mid-range type guy who's not good enough to go to the Division I, maybe not ready to get out of the area yet. You can get a couple of years of experience at a place like Brookdale who has put together a first-class basketball opportunity for guys to play. No, absolutely. And, and again, Division II is, a, is pretty much a full scholarship program. So, again, uh, the cost of college education today is expensive, and anything you can get uh, for playing a sport or academically, you need to take advantage of it. 
I believe college loan interest is hovering about eight, eight and a half percent these days. So uh, the more you borrow, the more you pay. Yeah, that's right. Economics 101. Step into the line is Devad Ike. He's had a hot hand here in this third quarter to help Orthopedic Institute climb back into it. They are down right now again by nine. Well, the goal really was to try to get it under 10, so 144 to go. They could shave a couple more points off by the end of the quarter. They're right where they really need to be. They had it down to six. It's as close as they've been since the first quarter. Pappas got fouled after he shot his three. Doesn't matter what level of basketball you play at, that is something that will always drive a coach crazy. That's really over-aggressive. Uh, Smith that time, uh, really, Larry Smith, Madawan grad, North Texas State player, got a little too aggressive on that. You just want to get a hand up in his face. You want to go straight up, not straight at the guy, or at the shooter. And Pappas with three, pretty good shooter. I think could be right back to six. Yep. Easy points from the line. Second one by Pappas drops. Two of three for the current Hawk. 75-68, 90 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Stearns up top. They've led since the game was tied at 16. Aminu with that finish. Smith will try a three. That one is good. Hasn't always been the best of shooting so far tonight for Orthopedic, but when they have made those threes, they've hit just enough to stay in contention. 60 seconds to go in the third quarter. It should be a travel, and it will be. Nickerson forcing it on his way to the rim. For the playoffs, JSBL normally has two referees per game in the regular season. Uh, a lot of these guys are rising D1 and potential pro league referees. Uh, they, they get experience reffing in the JSBL. Uh, and generally speaking, most of them do a terrific job. And with three on the game versus two in the playoffs, it's going to be tough to get away with stuff. Pappas with an offensive foul. Good defense by Neil Thompson. Yeah, Thompson beat him to the spot there, and uh, Pappas was either going to travel if he didn't use Thompson as, <laughs> as a block to stay up, and he got called with the elbow. Little give and go. Hamilton winds up with it. He's fouled on his way. 33 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's become a game here after Stearns leading by as many as 20. This lead has now been cut to six. Free throws, enough to give a coach gray hair and bald spots. Samson Ori Anatolo, the 6'8 player from Hartford, comes in for Orthopedic Institute. This free throw by Hamilton keeps it at six. Lewis on the drive. Last touched by Scotty Lewis, who is no fan of a lack of foul call. But he's a good case in point. He's got so much basketball in front of him, and as we talked about already, he's a guy who could pretty much pick the school that he wants to go play for after well, his last year. A league like this, Greg, is good for a young player like that because it's more physical. Oh, abs abs absolutely. And again, a lot of the games they play, again, they play on a very high AAU schedule. I mean, they play Under Armour tops, top schedule. They go all their big tournaments. And they, they do play some great, you know, rising college players. But you're playing against existing college players and guys that have played overseas or at a higher level. And again, it's a lot more difficult. And here we go. Six points. You couldn't. 
you couldn't ask for anything more. Quick break for us here after three. It is Stearns 77, Orthopedic Institute 71. We're back in about a minute to get the fourth quarter up and going. JSBL semifinals here, shortsportsnetwork.com. Start of quarter number four here from St. Rose High School alongside one of the commissioners of the league, Greg Capalco and Matt Harmon. Brad Briarscano at the controls tonight. Tom Tremblay, Kevin Williams helping out the broadcast as well. We've seen a good one so far, the first of two, the semifinal round of the JSBL. And we've got a foul right off the get-go. It is Stearns Chandler, the number two seed, trying to hold off this run from Orthopedic Institute of Central Jersey. Stearns with that last basket, make it 79-71. Yeah, Joe Nickerson would not be denied on that one. He, he had his head down and beat him to the spot, hit the bucket, drew the foul. But to get the game close, Devon E.K. from Ryder with eight, George Pappas from Monmouth with seven. There'll be opponents in the fall, but right now they're teammates. Led Orthopedic to a 30-19 edge in that third quarter to turn into a six-point game. Lead right now is nine at 80 to 71. Smith hopping through. Left it off for Sumbry, who's fouled. A lot of contact in the paint, and A.J. Sumbry to the line for a, a pair. So we've talked about this. If you're here, you're going to play. But let's say you get to about six minutes remaining, and it's still in doubt. If you're a coach, you're playing your best guys down the stretch, right, just like any other game. Oh, absolutely. Back in the day, and, and I coached this league for over 20 years. Actually, 20 years I coached, I coached in the league, and very fortunate to have some great college and terrific pros playing for me. But in close games, I played eight players. And down the stretch, I played the best five. Best five who were meshing, not the best five names. Whoever was doing it. And <laughs> there was a time I had Conrad McCray and Red Autry, two Syracuse big-time players, not playing a whole lot of minutes for me because the guys on the floor were doing better. And, uh, you know, it's kind of tough to do. But uh, coaches are going to have to decide, do I play my name player or do I play the player that's getting it done for me? And, and you want to win the game tonight, so down the stretch, everybody's had an opportunity to get it going. Look for them to go to their money guys. Smith with a three. Just hasn't been consistent enough tonight for Orthopedic Institute from the outside. A third of their misses, and we've got at least a tie game. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Normally, regular season game, you get about eight players. Uh, Coach Kaminsky's got 12 suited up tonight. And um, again, you try to play 12, it's really difficult. Inside, Amanu keeps it alive. And it draws a foul. That will get him a pair from the line. In between this first one and the second semifinal, which is Larson Ford and RK Athletic, we'll have a little bit of a break. Anywhere between 10, 15 minutes, we'll regroup and get you set for the second broadcast. We will be off air as that takes place.
Two more misses at the foul line, and again, that difference in the ball game right now being a double-digit game is the last four free throws that Stearns has missed. Lewis lost the handle on it at the foul line, but was bumped. Again, not playing against high school players. That lane looks like it's there. It closes down a little quicker. The hands are a little stronger. The contact's a little more. Something that he's going to have to adjust to playing for, you know, a top 10 or top 15 program. And I believe it'll probably be a top 10 program. Pappas. Lewis off the extra pass. His three is missed. And then a loose ball foul down inside. His Ringel had pretty good position. Got pushed by Sumbry. Yeah, Sumbry, Sumbry with that little forearm shiver to the back. Again, three referees, a lot of good angles. Not, it's going to be difficult to get away with something like that tonight. Ringel inside. Blocked away nicely. E.K. Lewis skipping. Extra pass, Weish. He'll drive and get the floater. Nice hang time by Travis. Five-point spread right now. Thompson, who's been reliable tonight, missed one inside. Pappas on his way. Had his shot blocked. That looked like a lot of ball by Nickerson. But Pappas gets bailed out and will go to the line for two. Yeah, the, the big question there, how much body was on that call. And game's moving awfully quick now. A lot of big bodies. Pappas, that's the second straight free throw he's missed. Chance to at least get one. Short. And off to Hubbard, who's been quiet in the second half and just lost the handle on it, going out of bounds. Nice, nice job by Weish pounding him. Hub had no place to go, dribbled right off his knee into the sidelines. Nice move by E.K. who will get fouled. Put back dunk by Sumbry won't count. A pair of free throws coming up with 7.19 remaining in the fourth. First time around when RKE played um, orthopedic, RKE had an eight-point lead with 40 seconds to go and lost by three in regulation. So, again, five points with this much time. <laughs> a lot of time. You just got to hang in there. Absolutely. All it takes is a couple of missed free throws and a couple of made threes down the stretch, and teams can turn around in a hurry. Larson Ford, RKE Athletic, game number two coming up about 15 minutes after the conclusion of this one. Right now a four-point spread. Good block by Sumbry. He's kind of changed the complexion of it. He and E.K. That's a, that's a pretty athletic front line. And uh, where Thompson early was going down the lane pretty easy. There's really not a lot of places to go. That mid-range is going to have to be, that's the shot that's going to be open. The question is, are you going to be able to hit it? Referees conferring as to where the ball will be put in. Thompson off the inbound. Against Weish, had it stripped away. It comes to Lewis, throws it into another gear, and gets the lay-in. Wanted the dunk, but will settle for the two regardless. It's a two-point game. Stearns has led since the first quarter. Big block 
That was Sumbri with By the Sumbri. block, yes. Pappas can give his team the lead, and does! The three from the outside by George Pappas. It is 81 to 80, Orthopedic Institute. Hubbard on his drive is fouled. Yeah, Hub really a long distance bomber. Uh, try to sneak in for two. Usually a pretty competent free throw shooter, but doesn't usually drive to the hoop that much, Matt. Trying to, they've been overplaying him though, so it kind of didn't leave them any option. He really needed to try to create some space there because he hasn't been getting any since early in the game from the three point line. First three throw is good. Tied back at 81. <laughs> One of two. He got a foul away from the ball. We go on Blake Hamilton. Crowd's filled out pretty nicely since we've started this. No matter what happens in the regular season here, it's usually pretty close to a packed house for all the playoffs. Great crowd last night, great crowd again tonight, and we expect another big one Thursday night, 8 p.m. to see the championship game. Winner of this one, which are the number two and number three seeds, will play the winner of Larson Ford and RKE Athletic. That's our second game of the night. E.K. gets both from the line. 83-81. Six minutes to play in the fourth. Hubbard driving. Hamilton's put back no good. Sumbury grabs a loose ball and then gets whacked by Aminu. Last week when these two teams played, Micah Seaborn, the, the, uh, the, the Mammoth player, uh, who just finished his career at Monmouth, had a, had a huge game against his team. And he was back in Texas looking to sign a pro contract overseas. Uh, it's, a big, it's a big loss for Stearns not having him here in the building. Because he, he played very well for them his last, uh, his, his last two games in the league. But that is the JSBL. Uh, J-Rob, had he been playing... If the league didn't end on uh, August 2nd, on the 4th, he's headed to France to play. So that's just how it is. You play with who you have, and hopefully you got enough left in the tank to get it done. 85-81. With the Pedic Institute with now a four-point lead. Wickerson no good. Put back by Hubbard, one of the foul that didn't come. Hamilton in the lane. Huge put back by Blake. Sombri kicks out. EK driving, reverse layup. Everything right now is working for Orthopedic Institute. Thompson back the other way. He gets his own miss. It was blocked and then a Grab foul down inside, a holding foul. Orthopedic is not settling for the threes they were chucking from the cheap seats in the first half. A lot more going to the basket and a lot more finishing. And they're not giving the easy threes that they gave up in the first half. Sultan Amadou from Ramapo. Gets a friendly roll on that first free throw. See some players from game number two starting to roll in and don their respective team's jerseys. One thing about the JSBL, nobody gets to take the uniforms home. The unwritten rule of the league Coaches collect them, coaches clean them, coaches pass them out. So you're the head cook and, I guess, uniform washer if you're coaching in this league. <laughs> Lewis is three. 
Somehow I doubt you were doing the laundry for 20 years as the head coach as RKE. Yeah, I did it a few times, but my wife Cindy did a terrific job more often than not. Nice move by Hubbard to get Weish on the ball fake. Tied right now at 87. Lewis in trouble. Somebody trying to post up inside. This five seems to work right now for Orthopedic Institute. Pappas with the shot clock winding down. They've got four minutes to play now in the fourth. Yeah, it, Stearns, after scoring 58 in the first half, has 29 in the second with 3.55 to go. And that ball is headed to the curtain. Well off the mark from Jerome Hubbard. Matt, both teams have tightened their benches considerably here down the stretch. Well, you said, right, it's about finding maybe not the biggest name five guys, but finding the five guys that are working the best together. Oh, absolutely, and, and, and it's interesting. Seems to be a lot more space around the basket with, you know, Stearns losing Mike Amon because he took up a lot of space. Wasn't a lot of room for the, for the quicker front line of orthopedic to go to the basket. With him on the bench, they find a lot more seams for drives to the hoops and putbacks. Larry Smith returning. Amanu checking out. Stearns right now going pretty small in terms of their lineup. And Hamilton, who's really the only inside type guy. Three and a half minutes to go. Ortho up by a deuce. Yeah, what, what you have almost, because Nickerson's really a undersized three, is almost a four-guard lineup. But again, he's not a great three-point shooter. Let's step back off the mark. Weish, full head of steam. The lane open up as the sea parted. Weish drops in two, gives his team a four-point advantage. Thompson tries to respond back. It's been a tale of two halves for Stearns with that three-pointer. They've got numbers back the other way. As soon as Hubbard got the ball, you had two orthopedic players go right at him. There was no place for him to shoot the ball, and that pass got through, and... There's Lewis with the alley-oop. Great find by Pappas off a deflecting ball. Six-point advantage for Orthopedic Institute. 93-87, they lead. Timeout, Stearns. Now, that was something we saw a little of in that Team Rio Doughboys exhibition earlier in the year. He really looked like he belonged on that play. Timeout on the floor. T-shirt toss going on right now. Wow. JSBL T-shirts to the fans. Uh, the league's giving them away to, um, to all three nights. They're giving 30, 40 T-shirts away every night to the fans that are loyal to come out, courtesy of RKE Athletic. End of the season, you got to get rid of those, right? I mean, no, they at actually, this point. They, they actually made them up. They actually made them up just for the just for the playoffs. So, uh, one of one of the unscheduled promotions for the league. She doesn't realize she's on TV right now. If she turned that shirt around. We would have gotten a perfect look at it. Oh, she was here last night. She wanted one last night. Told her if she came back, she'd get a good chance of getting one. Well, there you go. 93-87, Orthopedic Institute. Down big in the first half. Has come all the way back and then some. They have taken a six-point advantage with 239 remaining in this fourth quarter. Uh, and again, now, now it's, it's really crunch time for Stearns. They can't waste any possessions. Right off the inbound, Nickerson maybe got away with an extra step that they didn't call. 
Uh, they didn't, and, and, and Sumbri and, and Ike closed the lane down. Again, there's really, really no place to go down there. Weish on the drive. Kicked in the corner for Pappas, who was pinned off a little bit. I think Hubbard is saying, I caught it and was calling timeout on the way out of bounds. And that doesn't work anymore. Pappas will put it back in play. The shot clock didn't change either. There are seven right now remaining. Weish will take a long three. Really, really off balance on that one. But again, with the shot clock winding down, uh, his options were limited. How about Sumbury, who's kind of changed this complexion of the second half as he has taken up a lot of space, was down there with three white jerseys. He got a hand on it and got fouled. Again, last year he played quite a few games in the league and was by the end of the year was a dominant big man. Again, the orthopedic team was 1-9 and nine in the regular season and got eliminated in the first round of the playoffs, uh, but, but he was their mainstay. Again, a lot of new faces for them this year. EK's a new face. Pappas is a new face. Went 6-4 and four during the course of the regular season. Won last night in the opening round of the playoffs and now sitting here on the verge of knocking out number two Stearns trailers. Hamilton's three. Off the glass and good. Should only count if he called it. He gets the benefit of being a veteran. Absolutely he does. 95-90, less than two minutes now to go. Game's all about stops here. Need to get him to get yourself back in the ball game. Lewis peering at the shot clock, which is now at six. Good crossover, looking for that extra pass. One more, Lewis gets it back. His three is good! Had the alley-oop. That got the crowd on its feet. Maybe just hit a basket that will send his team to the finals. Hubbard trying to answer back, no good. Rebound grabbed by E.K. Possession will be kept by Orthopedic Institute. Uh, I don't think so. I believe that uh, he just lost the ball there. It'll be an interesting conference and... Well, one was pointing one way, one referee, one was pointing the other. It's yeah. been overturned and it is turns. I think killing the clock is more important than trying that long distance home run pass. One thing about St. Rose, it's a very cozy gym if you haven't been here before. Probably no more than about 80, 82 feet long. Most of the college courts are 94. Playing on the smaller court, you make that home run pass, most of the time it's going onto the stage or going off the wall here. So it's, it's really not a lot of space to complete it without turning the ball over. Foul last time out on Scotty Lewis, his third. You get six here in between the start and the end. NBA rules as it comes to the foul situation. I guess Scotty Lewis has given uh, Orthopedic a huge lift here in the fourth quarter. He has, Sombri has, EK has. Here's Lewis now! Oh, that would have been special, but hits the side of the rim. Gives Stearns an opportunity. Hubbard from three. Uh, he's not as hot as he was back in that first quarter. Nickerson picks up the loose ball on the drive. Lewis will pick up the rebound. Three on two. Pappas gives it up. Driving and fouled was Devon Ike, who will go to the line for two. Well, we're definitely going to have a new champion this year, Matt, anyway, with uh, CBU getting knocked off last night. Um, Stearns has been a mainstay for years. Uh, only 36 seconds to turn it around, and uh, orthopedic, again, terrific turnaround from last year's 1 and 9 regular season record. 36 seconds away from securing a spot in Thursday's final. We still got one more game to come. Top seed Larson Ford against number four RKE Athletic. We'll start no more than 15 minutes after the conclusion of this game. Blake Hamilton commits the foul. That's his sixth. 
You know, I, I tell you, this is, this is actually really taking a closer look at the lineups that are on the floor. Uh, what did he, I missed that one. But taking a closer look at the lineups that are actually on the floor, you got Lewis, who's in high school, Pappas, who's a sophomore at Monmouth. You got Sumbri and EK are both uh, junior and a rising senior at their respective schools, uh, Ryder and Wagner. And you got Travis White, who's basically, this is his second year out of college. I mean, you really have a, have a college team on the floor here beating, you know, what is a very veteran JSBL team. Lewis misses the first free throw. Trying to get his team into triple digits with this one. And does. Up by eight. Blocked away, a three on one. Lewis gets it and jams it in. Three pointer there goes down for Nickerson. Our score sitting right now 102. 95. Great recovery, by the way, Brad. That was fantastic. And this is our second edition of Carrying Things Live off of our streaming service at SureSportsNetwork.com. will be carrying Friday night football games along with them being simulcast at 92.7 WOBM FM during the course of the fall. We'll start that Labor Day weekend. Nickerson with another three. Going to be too little too late. You would think here 103 98 with six and a half seconds to go. Boy, that author Orthopedic Institute played that last possession at least a little casual. Yeah, they, they, they did again. Uh, with the, with, with the time left on the clock, they believe this is, is all wrapped up. And for all intents and purposes, it is. Uh, it's still a two-possession game, so two foul shots really nails it. But um, you got to get you got to give the younger team credit because uh, they were on the mat and it looked like they were wobbly a bit. But uh, they, they kept cutting it and cutting it and cutting it. And uh, it seemed to be Stearns that got a little bit tight down the stretch. Timeout has been taken. Six and a half seconds remaining. 104.98 the score. Seemingly all Orthopedic Institute will have to do here is just defend one last time. Second game to follow, semifinal number two. Larson Ford against RKE Athletic. Those guys, those teams, I'm sure, chomping at the bit to get going. That game was originally scheduled for 8.45. Last bucket off the mark, and... 104-98 win for Orthopedic Institute as they go into the final on Thursday at 8 o'clock against the winner of our second game. Tell you what, you, lot, they, they really took a while to regain their composure. Again, they, they looked maybe like a little deer in the headlights to start the game. But uh, basketball, of course, the game of runs, and uh, they got it together. I mean, Stearns had... 58 points at the half and ended with 98. Only scored 40 points in the second half. Hubbard, who couldn't miss in the first half, couldn't get an open look in the second. So, bottom line is, is that uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, you know, you survive and you move on, and, and that's what happened tonight.
Quick throw out courtside. Kevin Williams standing by with a couple of guys from the winning team. 